Welcome to another week of Brew Skies Booze News. I am Mike Morgan, and you are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> you know, that really does merit some explanation of this show. If you noticed, and you probably haven't, most of what you see on YouTube is cut. You know, you'll see cuts in frames. There's no cut in this because we film it in one take like it's live. So do I occasionally say stupid things that offend people? Absolutely. fucking lutely <laughs> And it's probably gonna continue just because you try sitting here for a half an hour and doing something impromptu without occasionally saying something offensive. Especially if you are by nature, sometimes offensive. <laughs> Well, on that, <laughs> on that note, this is the booze news on the Bruce Guys Network. We aren't just gross and say offensive things. We actually are giving our opinion on the news and the alcohol industry for the week. So on that note, if you want to so continue to support us, check us out on Patreon. Like, subscribe, comment, uh, get involved with the Bruce Guys Network, and we'll be greatly appreciated and be able to keep doing this stuff. So on that note, we do love you people. Let's dive right into the news. There has been a new study that just came out this week. It shows definitively that beer goggles do not make you more attractive. No, they make other people more attractive. Well, they don't make other people more attractive. They don't make anyone more attractive. Beer goggles don't make people attractive. They just lower your standards. That's what it is. Yeah. But now it's proven. Scientifically, you do not look better, just I care less. Hmm. I mean, I've done a lot of my own research on this, and I'm not sure, but uh, okay. Well, what they did is they got a bunch of 20-somethings in a room, mm -hmm. got them real drunk, and then had them rate the attractiveness of people. And then they had them rate the attractiveness of those same people when they were sober. Numbers were the same. Did they also ask, would you bang that person? The, like, how attractive is that person? Would you bang them? So, like, the attractiveness stays the same, but the bangability... <laughs> I was gonna ask what the what the units were on bangability. Uh, it's, bangability. Is the official, it's the official unit. How many bangability units do you think you have? Seventy two. <laughs> it's been scientifically proven. Well, <laughs> continuing on, Allegiant, the budget airline that everyone loves to fly. Yeah, is adding twenty dollars for a flight, five hundred if you want to take a fucking suitcase. <laughs> well, they're adding expensive drinks. They're, oh, great. They're adding extremely expensive yeah. drinks, like $35 to $50 per drink expensive drinks. Because they you, think cheap <laughs> bastards want to buy expensive alcohol for some reason. What, what do you get in a drink that makes it a $30 drink? Nothing. It's just scotch. They're just literally selling scotch for like $35 for a shot. Yeah. I'm waiting for Allegiant to start. When I was a kid, you still had like pay bathrooms. You know, you had to like put a quarter in. The, you know, they were rare by the time I was a kid. But, uh... You know, you'd have to like put a quarter in the bathroom to use it. I'm waiting for a lesion to charge you $75 to take a piss on a flight. It's only a matter of time. Get yeah. them drunk, then charge them to pee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of budget airlines, Spirit is going the opposite direction of Allegiant. Legion. Yeah. They finally added alcohol and they want dirt cheap. Buzz balls. Nice. Nice. Yeah. They're adding buzz balls, $8 a ball, and you can get buzzed. For... What's a buzz ball? Oh, you've never seen buzz balls? No. Okay, they're these plastic cans that are round, they're ball shaped, they're filled with neon colored liquid with a high level of alcohol for usually $3 or less yeah. uh, at cheap gas stations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just designed to get, uh, you know, um, drunk, alcohol, quick and easy. Drunk. And yeah. Yeah, it sounds like and a great idea. And filled with sugar. I mean, they're, sure. they're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, people have been acting really um, well and polite on flights lately so i think giving them a bunch of cheap booze is probably a great idea i agree yeah <laughs> spirit <laughs> you <going>. spirit <laughs> you're actually less dickish than allegiant so here's to you uh the august beer purchaser index is out now if that doesn't mean anything to you i'll quickly explain what happens is is that the wholesaler association the Beer Wholesaler Association goes out to a select amount of bars and stores and retailers and asks them, are you buying more or less of a bunch of different types of products? Are you buying more or less seltzer? Are you buying more or less cider? Are you buying more or less craft yeah. beer? Et cetera, et cetera. Largely, what's happening is that the trends are continuing. Craft is down. People are buying less craft. It's been this way for over a year now. So every month they keep buying less. 
pre below premiums up. Uh, so bush light, natty light, that's up. And the only other thing that's up uh, is imports. Imports are up big. So your Modellos, your Coronas. Yeah. Not so, good imports. I'm sure that like Samuel Smith isn't increasing in sales. No, it's, it's Belgian Trappist beers are on the rise. Imported from Mexico. And, yeah, yeah. It's your Modellos. It's your Coronas. Little it's bats your... and Corona. Oh yeah, it's very fancy. You know, no one really talks about imports in regards to Labatt when they're talking about imports. It's always right. south of the border, never north. I like some Moosehead yeah. personally. Yeah, you know, a lot of great craft in Canada, but they're. Um, I'd like to actually sometime explore the distribution system in Canada because it's more screwed up than ours. Oh yeah, you know they the have. They're making. They're making some uh, amazingly good beers. I think some of the best beers I've had in my life were in Quebec, but they can't really distribute them because their whole, you know, their whole distribution system is really crooked. So you've you've got some of those monopolies, but um, yeah, I mean, they're regular shitty beer. Labatt, Moose said it's not bad. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So if you want to see those things change, support craft beer, right? Maybe buy it at a store instead of a tap room for a change. Um, which is a weird thing to say as yeah. a brewery owner. Yeah. But Don't important. come to Brett's tap room. <laughs> Go to the liquor store instead. I mean, there's a chance I might just insult you anyway, so uh, it's best just to avoid it. Or belch at you. <laughs> I don't remember doing that. Are you gaslighting me? Uh, France, they're about to do something crazy. They're going to pay winemakers over 200 million euros to destroy surplus wine. What? Yep. They're destroying it. They're not oh. destroying it in the sense that they're throwing it down the drain. They're paying them to distill it into ethanol to be sold for fuel. Oh my God, this hurts. Yep. Why? Well, they're largely attributing to, to it as a large cultural shift of drinking in France and people are just drinking less wine. Well, export it, jackass. Yeah, I don't Francois? get it. Well, you don't understand how a Allegiant will only charge you. <laughs> I, I don't know what the flying over here. God damn, do a little two buck chuck or something. Well, and part of it too they're saying is they want to protect the French wine industry and they don't want it to be viewed prices. as cheap. Yeah. So it's the prices. So they're yeah. paying them to destroy the surplus so prices don't go God down. forbid you could buy a Bordeaux for a reasonable amount of money. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I want to know, well, are these people just not drinking or are they switching to drinking seltzers and RTDs or like what's happening within the French community? Yeah, I don't believe that the French are less drunk. Perhaps no. you're, go you're going there this week. Boots will be on the ground and, uh, as of when you see this. Yeah. I'll be in France. Ooh. I should have actually challenged you. I should have pretended that you were not. And you, you would have like shown your commitment to Bruce guys by traveling to France to investigate. Well, this, this is where that's scenario. exactly why we're going. Yes, you're right. Yes. <laughs> Boots will be on the ground. We're going to investigate French culture and figure out, one, how are they so thin? And two, is French wine actually falling apart? And three, is Pepe Le Pew actually French? For those of you who are not sure what Pepe Le Pew is, it's from the Looney Tunes, which is probably before you were born. <laughs> really? The kids don't know about Pepe Le Pew? Um, I don't think so. My two-year-old doesn't. <laughs> A lot of life lessons with Pepe Le Pew. I'm not sure what they were, but... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they were good life lessons. Uh, are you ready to go to Hong Kong? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you want to go to Hong Kong? And then I'll tell you why we should go. Because it just looks, it's like Tokyo, man. It, it just looks so obnoxiously crowded to me. Um, it just everything, tight spaces and lots of lights. It looks like modern Times Square, except worse. There's nothing appealing uh, about it to me. Well, uh, Hong Kong's desperate for people to go there. They're really they putting a focus be, on tourism. It's like it's shitty. Well, <laughs> well, apparently before China took over Hong Kong, yeah. tourism was very good. It was yeah, one of their main yeah, industries. Yeah, and now right. tourism's in the shitter and people well, aren't going out right. and people aren't drinking and they're not going to malls late at night. So the yeah. government is putting a big push on it's time to visit Hong Kong. And they're this is what they're going to do. They're going to extend the time that malls are open, even later. Right. And more importantly, Minnesota's doing the same thing. Free drinks. They're going to start giving away free alcohol it's just if you come out after a certain in a, in an hour. hour. Just random people? They're going to pick like days. The government is giving out booze? Yes. They're going to pick days of the week, and then you can go out and you can get free alcohol. If you're, as long as you're going out to the clubs, you can drink for free. But if you insult the government 
alcohol, it's capital punishment. <laughs> because China is in charge now. China is in charge. I think this is that's the bigger issue. It's not that tourism is dying. Well, it is. But it's dying because no, China tourism. took over. Yeah. And also, are young people even going out in China? Unemployment rates are like over 50% for young people under yeah. 30 in China. Like, who's got money to go out to the club when you can't even work? The economy's bad. The government is atrocious. And so, fuck them. I mean, I do feel sorry for the people of Hong Kong because they had a democracy and they have lost it to a bunch of autocratic pieces of shit. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to Hong Kong. All right, well, bourbon. Tokyo, I think, is a fine government, but I'm not going there either. It's oh. too crowded. <laughs> I like my spaces. I do like my spaces. I'm American. Uh, well, bourbon, we all know, is doing gangbusters, right? Yep. Well, not all whiskeys are created equally. Jack Daniels, doing terrible. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not that good, but that's kind of shock. Actually, I had some Jack Daniels a while back. I hadn't drank it in a long time. It was better than I remembered. Charcoal aged? Yeah, I mean, what happened to Jack Daniels? It, it was always the, I mean, when I used to tin bar in a country bar, mm. it, it was almost the only whiskey that we sold was Jack Daniels. Well, I think this is a good, um a good time to explain the difference between what Jack Daniels is and what bourbon is too. Bourbon is Jack Daniels is not bourbon. Right. Jack Daniels it's, it's is whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. It's Tennessee whiskey, which is a lot which is definitely different. The flavors it's not are sweet. different. Not as sweet. The charcoal it's a charcoal filtered, charcoal aged. I don't know. There's charcoal in it. Something somewhere. with charcoal. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's filtered. I mean that's part of the, the color of it. That's why it's darker in color. Oh, because it's picking some of that up? Yeah. Well, anyway. Whiskey isn't bourbon, but bourbon is whiskey. I know that's a little bit weird, but whiskey is basically a grain-based spirit. Producer Dan will create a Venn diagram that'll be on the... Yeah. There you go. Venn diagram created. What, what's the point? Well, th no, there is no point. It's okay. just, I just wanted to say... Do we know I just why? wanted you to say Jack Daniels is bad, because I also think it's bad. Why is Jack Daniels... Why, though? I think it's bourbon. I mean, why People is are it... drinking bourbon. Why drink mm. Jack Daniels when you can get good bourbon now? It's probably not sweet enough. Well, the palates are going sweeter. Well, everyone loves sugar. Everyone does love sugar. Uh, Americans are losing their mind over they George are. Kube. Period. End of, <laughs> end of story. Next story. So we all know over who? Kube? He's <laughs> <laughs> he is the alcohol czar. Biden's alcohol czar. He's the yeah. one who said that we're looking at lowering the recommended consumption of alcohol from two drinks a day for men down to two a week. Yeah. He's the one who announced that. Mm -hmm. Well, guess who's not happy about it? Ted Cruz and the Republicans. They're pissed. Well, it is does smack of fascism, I will say. First of all, let them drink beer, right? Right. We can all agree with that. Yeah. Second of all... Let Ted Cruz sober up. Maybe he won't say such <laughs> stupid shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're actually sending you to Canada to investigate yes. this two drinks a week minimum. Yeah, I, that's what you're going to France mm -hmm. to check out uh, the situation with the wine. Yep. And I'm going to Vancouver to a bunch of craft breweries to investigate how their drinking lasts up there now that the government has said that it's not good for you. So are you going to drink two drinks a week while you're out there? I'm going to drink two drinks before breakfast, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> This might sound like we're it's doing lots a of bears. I mean, I'm gonna. It's I have to have my courage. constitution. Yeah, my courage. I think mm -hmm. uh, isn't that what? Who who was the bear fighter? Was it Teddy Roosevelt? Uh, yeah, that's where we get the teddy bear from. Yeah, but he didn't shoot the bear, which is why you have the teddy bear. Like he refused to shoot a bear for I don't know, it was cute or some shit like that. And that's uh, so that's where the teddy bear came from. The stuffed animal. Well, it might sound like we're doing a bit, but I assure you, we will actually be doing booze news remote next week and the week after. We are going to be in Canada and France, respectively, so you'll get to see some nice yep. views behind us for a change. Split screen. We're also going to take you guys to bars while we're in those places. We'll do some short videos and uh, check in and let you see where we're at and what we're drinking. We'll let you know the state of alcohol consumption in Canada and France. Heineken, they finally left Russia. Two years after yeah. they said they would, nice. they sold off all of yeah. their breweries uh, for a dollar, and they said that they lost $300 million with this deal, which is one of the worst deals. It's a Trumpian deal, really. Right. It's that level of bad. But they're taking the brands with them. 
which is Heineken, Miller, and Guinness. So if you're a Russian and you like Guinness, well, too bad. Yeah. I love their integrity, Heineken's integrity. You know, I mean, there's nothing that pisses me off more than lack of integrity and fucking hypocrisy. Like Kid Rock drinking a fucking Bud Light. Like that was fucked up, man. And so that shit just fucking pisses me off. <laughs> this really is terrible beer, by the way. <laughs> I mean, this thin, watery rice fucking piss. <laughs> if you don't know what Mike is getting at here, Check out our YouTube channel. Look for the Fistful of Sapporo's video, and we explain it all. Basically, in short, Sapporo's responsible for killing America's first craft beer, and Mike has some fun with a little pistol, shooting some Sapporo cans, and now he's... Actually, no consuming. bit. Drink that. Like, taste that. It's fucking awful. I like the piss-warm temperature, too. Line of Kugel. They're on strike. No longer. The Brewers have finally made a deal. Teamsters Local 671 or something along those lines. Yeah. I like that you just resigned to pouring the rest of it in your glass. Well, they get pissed off when I get up to get a beer. I'm not... When we stop recording, I'm pouring the rest of it out. It really is terrible. It looks pretty, though. It looks very thin and watery, and it tastes like rice and piss. Well, do you want to know a new study? Another new study? Sure. I it always has, like studies. It has now been scientifically proven that pre-gaming leads to unsafe alcohol and substance abuse. That's unsafe alcohol shocking. consumption. <laughs> yeah, right? That's shocking. Getting drunk before a party leads right. to more drinking that's unsafe. Right. Yeah. It also increases your chances of poly substance abuse. What the hell is, the, like, multiple is getting stoned and doing coke in the bathroom and shit yeah. like that? Yep, that's the one. Sure. Yeah, I don't think you needed a study for that. You could have just asked me. If there's one thing I learned at OU in six years. Yeah, Polly. Getting my bachelor's. Whatever you just said. <laughs> Pre-gaming definitely only increased the amount of alcohol I was going to drink, not decreased shit. You know, regardless of my bangability score, uh, what, I know, what I know from OU is that pre-gaming dramatically reduced the probability of me banging. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, oh, they're pretty. Doesn't work as well as one would think. You, 20 beers in. I always, I always <laughs> told myself I would spend less at the bar if I pre-gamed mm -hmm. in the house. That was never the case. That was though. always the idea. It never works. Uh, we have yet another study around beer that came out this past yeah. week. A lot of studies going on right now. Beer is good for your gut health. When consumed in a moderate amount, it is good for your well-being. Yeah, you tell that to that fascist in Washington. <laughs> What's his name? Coob or whatever. Yeah. I don't even know if that's how you say it. Maybe it's Cobe. It's good for uh, gut health. Yep. You know, I always wondered, like, the sour beers that you do, the Britannomyces that are, that's in the beer is the and same. And lactobacillus. And lactobacillus. Yeah, that's actually it's the lactobacillus is in yogurt, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's That's the culture that's in yogurt. I'm not so allowed to say that our beer is probiotic and good for you, yeah. but. I can. <laughs> Brett's beer is good for your gut health. This beer really, no shtick. Fuck this company for its evilness, but also fuck it because this is truly, genuinely disgusting beer. The can's nice though. The cans are great. It's really heavy. Uh, they shoot well. The world's biggest bottle of whiskey has been sold. Can you guess how big it is and the price? Biggest bottle of whiskey. Um, I don't, the vessel, what is it? Is it actually glass? Yep, it's a bottle. Um, I'm gonna guess it's 20 feet tall. Oh, I meant volume. <laughs> I like you went to height though. <laughs> well, what would that be in a, a hundred gallons? You're actually really close, 82. 82 gallons. Do you know how much it went for? Uh, if it helps you with the pricing, it was yeah. McCollin 32 year scotch. Oh my God. I wanna see the douchebag pouring it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say fifty thousand dollars. One point one million. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I was way uh, off, like the both way. Last week, though, what was it that sold it at auction? Wasn't that a McCall too? It was. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was like a lot less. Than yeah, it's like fifteen thousand. That was just yeah. the most expensive bottle of whiskey sold in this year at that auction. Where this okay. is a different thing, I guess. I don't know. One I don't and know. a half million dollars for a eighty-two gallon. 
bottle of whiskey. Uh, yeah, how do you even move it? How do you pour it? Who uh, knows? It, it, you're going to wind up spilling most of it on your uh, floor uh, because you can't <laughs> pour it. Uh, uh, try getting out of a shot glass. Well, here's your question of the week, Mike. Yeah. And if you would no. throw your answers down as well, comment below. We'd love to hear what your answer to the question of the week is as well. But the question of the week this week is, what is your go-to vacation morning drink? What's the first morning drink you're going to have on vacation? Oh, man, you know. Ideally, not necessarily what the one is you have at your fingertips or available or what you're, you normally do, but what's your go-to? Honest to God, it's usually a beer. I mean, I'll drink, um, I'll drink Bloody Marys. They're fine. And um, a mimosa is a fine, pleasant. Actually, I don't know. Like, brunch, I'll enjoy a mimosa. Sure. I'm not really into Bloody Marys that much. Mm. They're okay. But, um, and the tomato juice, the sustenance, all that. But I don't know. They give me a weird little buzz too early. I like a Bloody Mary, a coffee, and a water. Yeah. Ice water, ideally. Just yeah. all three of those, just get it in me. I want to piss as much as possible before 9 a.m. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I have some friends from the UK. Apparently, Bloody Marys aren't a thing there. Really? So the last time they came to visit me a couple years ago. Is uh, Bloody Mary named after an English uh, queen? No idea. Oh, is there a queen named Mary? Well, there were several. Mary, Queen of Scots? But, uh, yeah, I don't know which. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just do know that scientifically speaking, if you say Bloody Mary in the mirror uh, three times in the dark, you get typhoid. You do. You see her behind you. <laughs> it happens. I've tried it. Well, uh, here's you try it if you're not too scared. <laughs> here's your non-alk story of the week: air pollution, worse for you than drinking and smoking. Air pollution knocks 2.3 years off of the global lifespan. Of all humans. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, a lot of particulate matter in the lungs. It. I was in Montana a few years back, one of the times that Montana was on fire. And I spent the whole week having trouble breathing. I mean, it. it, it um, yeah, it's not good for you. No, it's not. Well, and if anything, now you have a good reason to continue your unhealthy habits because air pollution is worse for you, so you may as well keep smoking. In the 19th century, the number one health problem in breweries was actually particulate in the air. Really? Yeah. Like a dust you know, and stuff? grist from, yeah. uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Baker's lung. Yeah. Well, that's the news. The non news story of the week is Clarence Thomas still taking bribes. This has been booze news. Thank you guys. We love you. Cheers. And honest to God, don't drink Sapporo for all the reasons. <laughs>